Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Amen. 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 So that is the word of the Lord. And actually, it didn't really make sense to me until Pastora spoke today. So I will just give the verse. And the verse is in Revelation 22, 12 to 14. Amen. And behold, this is the word of the Lord. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my rewards is with me. To give to everyone according to his word. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. You know what, church? As uh, as we are worshiping, and as, as just I read this word, I now realize this is the word of the Lord for me at ICM. God is telling us, Behold, I am coming quickly. Did he say he will delay? No. no. He said, I am coming quickly and my rewards is with me. So God will not just come in our needs this year mm. alone. That's right. He will come quickly and with reward. then the rewards is with him. Mm -hmm. And God, to the second verse, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Church, God is reminding you that He is the beginning and He is the end. He knows your beginning and He knows your ending. So you don't need to worry what kind of circumstances are you going through right mm -hmm. now. You don't need to look on that. You just need to know who the God you are serving. Mm -hmm. And that is all. Mm -hmm. As long as you know who is the God that you are serving, there is nothing to worry. That's why Jesus... Is very confident to tell you, do not worry. You mm. see, do not worry. Mm. Okay? Do not worry. I am the Alpha mm. and the Omega. Mm. The first and the last. So that means, He is, He is, He is, you know, greater above everyone. There is none like our God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, I actually, uh, I just remembered John Ramirez. John Ramirez is actually one of uh, ex-Satanists back then. So he said, when he was start, starting to, you know, um, getting in love with Jesus, mm -hmm. he said, okay, uh, okay, who's, who is this Jesus? I don't want to serve him like that. And then now, one demon came to him because maybe they perceived that, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's getting in love to Jesus. said, you know why Jesus, uh, you know why God threw us from heaven? Mm -hmm. And then the demon said, because he is jealous of us. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, so he's not thinking, okay, okay, he's jealous, all right. And then he said, he just came to think that, okay, if God is jealous to them and they throw him, then why, why did he, if he is not greater than them, why did he, why is he able to kick them out of heaven? <laughs> right? So, you know, so that just gives us encouragement that, you know, you need to know who your God is. Mm. The thing is that the problem is not God. The problem actually is your faith in God. Do you really believe that He is powerful? Do you really believe that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think in your prayers? Do you believe that? That's the, that's the question that we need to answer. So now let's talk about who is the bride of Christ. So I was actually a bit excited about it because, you know, the way how we do do it, uh, it's just exciting. So first, of course, to be the bride of Christ, she should be the one who said yes to the proposal. You yes. cannot become a bride without saying yes, you That's know, right. yeah. <laughs> with a proposal. Right. There is a proposal. So you need to say yes first to Jesus. So are you secure that you already say yes to Jesus? Mm. Because some people or some so-called Christians, they are just dating Jesus. Correct. But that is not how it is. When Jesus invites us to his kingdom, we need to be what? Commitment. That's mm. why following Jesus is actually a commitment. It's not mm. a trial and error. That's right. You know, so you need to like commit. Are you really willing? Because when you mm. say yes to Jesus, there is no turning back. That's right. The only way to go is forward, That's right. no backward. Yes? Okay, so 
So, we need to realize the first thing, you need to be secured with yourself that you already said yes to Jesus. Yeah. Num number two, to be the bride of Christ must be the one who has a pers personal relationship yeah. with the bridegroom. Mm. You cannot marry someone you do not know. True. <laughs> Any one of us who want to marry someone that, you know, you, you just, you know, you just met just now, for for instance, you go out and then you met someone and then the, the person, you know, proposed to you. So do you want to marry someone like that? No. Mm. So you need to have what? A personal relationship with the bridegroom. Mm. And who is our bridegroom? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So let's go to Psalms 90.12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So you know, Jesus is telling us that He is coming quickly. Mm. So the theme of this matter is that, are we ready? Mm. He is coming, but are we ready? Mm. How prepared are you for the coming of your Savior Jesus? Mm. Or, you know, uh, or you are just casual with your Christianity that you're just okay going to church and that's mm. it. Okay? Pero, so, the best day to prepare for tomorrow is today. There is no other day. I heard, you know, um, one of my online mentors, she said that tomorrow is the only day that appeals to a lazy one. <laughs> so, if you need to do something, you don't need to delay it. You do it. Okay? So, the best day to prepare for tomorrow is today. And this will really make you uh, somehow smile. So there are seven ways to prepare on your, actually, uh, yeah, actually on our bridegroom, it's supposed to be. So number one, get fit and eat healthy. <laughs> it's actually practical, you know, when I was doing it, I was like, God, are you really serious with this? So, yeah, so this is the thing. You know, some women, I'll just use this analogy, okay, to explain this. So, some women, they are waiting for uh, for men to, like, propose to them before they take care of their body. Isn't it? <laughs> so, so, now, when the proposal came, and then how many months to the wedding day, they are now rushing. But mm. then men, you know, uh, you know, having a good body takes time. Okay, you cannot take it in just three months or what. So let's read uh, Ephesians 6, 19, 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you need to realize that you are bought at a price. Amen. So someone who is bought at a price means there's quality, mm. you know? So you're not just someone, you know, that someone can just ignore. No, you are bought at a price. You, Jesus bought you with a price. That's so right. first thing, as we are waiting to our Savior, we need to what? Take care of our body because mm. you cannot be just a spiritual mm. and not taking care of your body. Mm. Because if you have read, uh, if you have read this, uh, what's the book again of Robert Lardon's God's General, mm. most of the we, men and women who really, you know, uh, the Lord. serve the Lord, most of their endings are actually sickness. Mm. Okay, but of course we're not saying that, you know. But the thing is that uh, you, we need to take care of our body so that we can really finish our calling and we can we will we will not uh, not die before our assignment finishes because that's the goal you need to finish your assignment whether you like it or not each and every one of us has an assignment amen so number two to prepare for our bridegroom is to build your character okay so for first uh, Timothy 4 8 says, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is of that which is to come. So your character is very, very important to God. Mm. And that's why, you know, actually, uh, I, told, uh, I, I told God, I said, you know what, Lord, the first time that I preached on Sunday, I was preaching about establishment. Mm. And you said that, the last quarter of our year would be, you know, silence, 
you know, everywhere. Mm. But it's just like, you know, <laughs> it's a reverse. Mm. Because after December, this thing happens to, to our church, to pastor, you know. And I said, is that the thing you call silence everywhere? Mm. <laughs> but, you know, God is really has a different calendar. Mm. So he don't run to our own calendar. And this is the thing. Actually, we are grateful that, you know, Pastor and Pastora called for a fast from December 1 to 12. Because I do believe that it is really God who really inspired them to do that. Because God knows what Pastor is, what will Pastor will go through for the next days. That's why He prepared not just them, but the whole church. So can you just see, church, how, you know, God is really mindful of us. Mm -hmm. How God always thinks ahead of us. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. That's how great our God is. That's why we don't worry. You know, that's why we don't... Because I really believe if this thing happens to different to other church, I don't think they will respond the same way how we respond. Mm -hmm. Because as, as what I experienced, the first thing that we really did after it happened is to pray and mm -hmm. to praise. Mm -hmm. And that's all that I just remembered. Mm -hmm. And I, I still remember the first time that the girls in our boarding house, when we really prayed for pastor, the first thing that our mouth really uttered is praise unto God mm -hmm. and prayer. And, and I mean, praise and, you know, prayer. Just pray. That's it. Because that's the only thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. Right? But it doesn't mean that we are weak. No. Mm -hmm. it, be it is because we just trust the God who we are serving. Mm -hmm. Okay. And number three, Spend quality time with Him, which is with your bridegroom. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, uh, okay. it's actually interesting because, uh, of course, during the preparation time, so Dubai, you're, you entered proposal already, mm -hmm. so you entered that. And then now, so you're engaged now to Jesus, right? Mm. So when you are about to marry someone, okay, you don't just wait for them and say, oh, okay, uh, I know I'm going to marry this person. No. The, the next, the, the other thing that you need to do is what? To uh, uh, study the person that you're going to marry. Mm. You need to know what he doesn't like, what he likes. And so that you will know what you're going to do when you are two are together, right? Mm. So what makes what makes the person mad? What makes the person happy? So you mm. need to under to you know um, study that. Mm. Okay. So we can only do that by spending time with the Lord. And just Pastora was encouraging us earlier. She said that we should what take hold of the promises of God. And do you know that whenever you're reading the Bible, you are reading the love letters of God? That's right. You are reminding yourself of His promises. Without you reading it, see, nobody can read the Bible for you. True. <laughs> Just like it's really funny. They said, you cannot pay someone to do your push-up so that you will have six packs. <laughs> That's really impossible. Imagine, okay, I will pay you, do my push-ups, and then the six packs will be yours. No, it's impossible. See, guys, it's an individual work. Relationship with God is an corporate. You cannot say one day go to heaven and say, you know what, Lord? I am a member of BFICM. We are all spiritual there. We walk in the Spirit. No. God will ask you, okay, what did you do? You personally, it is an individual work. Okay, so number four, how to prepare? This is seven ways, by the way. So number four is set your mind on things above. Colossians three to set, uh, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So of course, when you know, when you already got the ring, the proposal, you know. The next thing is that you will imagine your life with that person, mm. right? So, in this case, we need to imagine our eternal um, uh, eternal life with Jesus. Mm. So that's why whenever, in everything that you do here on earth, we need to always include eternal things. Mm -hmm. I remember when Pastora told us uh, about her friend who is very luxurious when it comes to bags like that. You know, so that's true. We can buy that because yes, she can afford that. But does it will will it really um, 
uh, give her a, a return mm. in, in, for eternal things. Mm. No, because you're just buying it for yourself. But if you're going to sell your bags and then use the money to, you know, support someone on mm. school, then that is now making what? Mm -hmm. uh, eternal value. So mm -hmm. that is what Jesus is yeah. actually telling us. So sometimes we just think of ourselves, okay, I will go for to this place, okay, uh, you know, that's our goal. Actually, it's not bad to have a goal. But mm -hmm. the thing is that, does your goal glorify you or will just glorify, mm -hmm. or glorify God? Mm -hmm. That is the thing. Mm -hmm. We cannot live here on earth daily just thinking about ourselves. Mm. We need to always think, okay, how can I make a difference? Mm. So do you know, um, we cannot also be, you know, very spiritual that we don't think of other things. For instance, I realized mm. this. Uh, I have a schedule every day, of course. Mm. So when I go to, I go to the gym like in the morning like that. And then there's a guy there who is the caretaker, Kuya Boy. He's actually a former uh, addict like that. So he was just sharing to me his life. Something like that. And then, I'm rushing because at 9, I know I need to go and really spend time with God already. Mm -hmm. And then, this guy now came to me and, and now he said, you know, he started talking and sharing his uh, his life like that, what he's doing for like that. And I was like, oh, I need to go like that. Mm -hmm. And then God told me, Holy Spirit told me, you need to stay. You don't be religious. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes the five minutes that you will just stay there just to listen mm -hmm. for someone mm -hmm. is actually a big thing already mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. You might think, Dear Lord, you might you might want me to spend more time with you, but no, neglecting the sorry, neglecting the needs of others mm -hmm. is actually technically not doing what God is asking of you. Mm -hmm. So I just realized it when I went down of the gym and I was like you know, I'm late already. So, and then he said, no, you know, the time that you spent there listening to that guy is more valuable to me than you spending mm. time with me and yet not doing the work of the mm. kingdom. Because it shows Jesus to other people. Correct. Correct. What if you just neglect? Ah, sorry, sorry, kuya, I need to go. <laughs> then what will the person think? Mm. Right? I am representing Jesus mm. to him. Right. I want him to know that Jesus is a listener. Mm. That Jesus is always ready to listen to That's him. Right. So that when I speak to him the next time, she will he will listen. Why? Because mm. he knew that even whatever his position is, you are not judging them mm. in their position. But but you think if it's President Duterte who talk to you or your favorite celebrity star, I would really believe that you will really stay and even mm -hmm. take pictures with them, right? Mm -hmm. But that is not the character of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is no respecter of a person. Mm -hmm. He loves everyone. That's right. He loves the world. That's right. Okay? So it's very important with, that we don't just become, you know, very religious. Mm -hmm. Let us be sensitive with what the Holy Spirit is telling us to mm -hmm. do. Amen. So number five, Church, are you learning? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, number five is allow Holy Spirit to transform you into a worthy bride. Okay? So now when the turn uh, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abi Hai, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as her daughter, to go in the into the king, she requested nothing. But what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. When God gave me this, allow Holy Spirit to transform you into a worthy bride. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reminded of Esther. Mm -hmm. Because Esther, before he became a queen, there's one thing that, uh, there's one character of Esther that we need to really learn. And that is his submission to the mm -hmm. eunuch. He knows how to submit to his uncle. He knows how to submit to the eunuch. You know, it's actually not forced. And that's how Holy Spirit also in us. He is not forcing us to submit mm. to him. It will be, you know, your willingness that's to right. obey him. And 
Esther is very wise to do that. Mm. Because when Esther, you know, of course, the eunuch has been there for a long time in the castle. Mm. He's been serving the king for a long years. Mm. So now, the thing is that Esther knew, okay, so if I want to be chosen by the king, then I must ask someone who knows more than me. Mm. But if you will check the verses up, uh, preceding that, it says that all women there just get the things that they need, the ears, you know, and everything. Mm. But Esther, he, take, he took nothing. Mm. But what is only advice by the eunuch? Mm. So you see, that's wisdom. Mm. But if you think too much of yourself, you won't think of, you know, uh, getting advice from other people. That's right. And that's dangerous. Mm. That is really dangerous. Mm. Because if we think that we know more than others, mm. you know, you are really setting up yourself for a failure. Correct. And that's why everyone needs a mentor. Correct. And that's why we are thankful we have a mentor. <laughs> 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 so you see, so every one of us needs to have someone who is guiding us mm -hmm. and of course our best teacher is the holy spirit yes. because you know we might have a mentor but mentor will not be always around us That's right. mm -hmm. and we don't always have a load or a data to text him right mm -hmm. so but the holy spirit is always with us mm -hmm. he is in us you know the only thing that we need to do is what to ask him lord what should i do mm -hmm. and god will direct you mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing, you know, how God, you know, you don't need to really spend a load just to call God. You just speak. Like, Lord, what will I do? <laughs> Anytime, everywhere, whatever you are doing, God is with you. Amen, church? Amen. And number six, how to prepare for our bridegroom is to pray at all times. It's very important. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing about John Ramirez really, you know, awakened me, some part of me, because he said, since he is uh, he is part of the, the kingdom of darkness back then, as a Satanist, he said, do you know what time do we go to church? We have a, a devil church. They come from 5 p.m. To seven uh, sorry, seven p.m. to five a.m. the next day. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And that's why he said, when I became a Christian, and then it's two hours already, and they said it's done. It's done. <laughs> He's so surprised. Why? Because he said, when I was in the kingdom of darkness, we are worshiping, we are planning, we are talking to the devil ten hours. And see these Christians, they are just spending two hours and yet they said, Ang tagal! We need to finish quickly! Come on, let's finish quickly! So you see, I was like, oh my gosh. And his, and I want to j j just share it for those who have not yet heard it. He also said that the the months that, uh, that the enemy is always planning is October and December. October, when everyone is prepared preparing for the All Souls Day, November. Mm -hmm. So they are planning. And then December, when all Christians are busy in the malls buying gifts. <laughs> Can you imagine? When we, are, when, we, when, when we are doing these things, you know, and so tired, you know, because you don't have time anymore to pray, you know, that's when they take advantage. So that's why pray at all times. That's why... I now understood, okay, that's why God says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Because even in you are in the Jeep, you can pray. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are doing, you can pray. Mm -hmm. So there is no excuse. You cannot tell God, Lord, I don't have time. No. Mm -hmm. The time that you are just in the Jeep looking at your, you know, mm -hmm. the passengers there, that is already <laughs> a time to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So there is a time. So, and lastly, Seven way uh, to prepare for our bridegroom is to be ready to die to yourself. Mm. This is hard. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. This is, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. 
you know, I share this with mentor. When I visited pastor, I was actually reading this book from uh, of Robert Sliardon, Spiritual Power of Spiritual Hunger. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about dying to self. He said, you cannot follow Jesus without dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, because there are things that you are really going to give up for God. Mm -hmm. Just to really make way for Him to do His will in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when I saw Pastor and I was, I know, uh, talking to her, to him, we're talking to him. He's happy. I know that he is happy. Although, of course, there's in inside of him that you know, celebrating Christmas and New Year without his family, it's really hard. But you know, you could really see to him that he is still fulfilled, knowing mm -hmm. that he has accomplished what Jesus had asked him to do. Mm -hmm. And I told mentor, you know. I was just reading that book, and then that afternoon, that day, Sunday, when we went there, I met the one Robert Slerdon is talking about, wow. and that is Pastor. This is the one that he's talking about dying to self, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm actually, you know, taking this opportunity, uh, I'm not taking this opportunity for granted. Mm -hmm. This season that we are in, yes, mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard for the church, mm -hmm. but I'm actually maximizing this time to learn from Pastor. Yeah, really, like, how do, you know, because these are our leaders. They are our leaders. And I believe that in every circumstances, God is also using this. If we're just going, we're just going to allow Holy Spirit to guide us, mm -hmm. God is using this opportunity to teach us by example. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what our destiny will call us to mm -hmm. do in the future, right? So, that's why, okay, okay, so this happens, this is how they responded, okay, so... Actually, I am learning. I'm not just praying, but I am also learning. Because, because uh, that's actually, you know, this is really a high time so that we can really learn. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So church, that is the seven ways. Just... Okay, so uh, can you look? Okay. So Revelation... 3, 3, uh, 3, 3 says, Remember therefore what you have received and heard. Hold it fast mm. and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Mm. You know, Jesus gave these seven ways to prepare for him because mm. he wants you to be right. Mm. The thing is that God can come anytime. But the question is, are you ready? Mm. Because if you have unforgiveness in your heart, mm. do you think God can bring you where He is? Mm. No. Mm. The Bible tells us that we should what? That's why it's very important that every day we have uh, this, you know, um, reflection every, what do you call this, every time that we go home. Mm. Like, we always need to repent. And it's so funny that I heard one pastor uh, before that told us, um, oh no, you don't need to repent. Like, what? Are you sure? Are you sure? Like, and it's a pastor who tells us, we don't need to repent. So are you? We are. Are we perfect already? Once we receive Jesus Christ, no. It's a work in progress. We need to always ask the Lord. And I saw that when Pastor prayed, uh, you know, today, you know, that we started with asking forgiveness to God, because there sometimes you know. There are things that is happening to us that sometimes we can't really control ourselves. True. That's why we need to always be conscious of Him and we ask for repentance. Mm -hmm. So, if if repentance is not found in your daily routine now, mm -hmm. then that there might be a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you might be thinking there is nothing wrong to you. Mm -hmm. But actually, being a lukewarm Christian is actually a thing to be repentant of. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Therefore, let him who takes his stance let the uh, let him take heed lest he mm. fall. Oh. So I just want to go back to Revelations 22, 12 to 14. It says in verse 14, "Blessed are those who do his commandments." Mm. He did. Uh, I want you to look at that. He did say, "Who preach his mm. commandments?" He said, "Blessed mm. are those who do." It mm. means mm. who gives an action to his mm. word. Okay, okay. because. Uh, an information can never become a wisdom until it is applied. Mm -hmm. Amen? So for something to really work on our life, we need 
to apply the word of God. Okay. And that's why even Jesus has given all the keys already of heaven, not mm -hmm. every one of us is experiencing the same blessing. Why? Because you can only experience the blessing that you are able to apply in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. So, and for last word, Jesus is coming anytime soon. So I want to mm -hmm. give us this question. How prepared are you? Mm -hmm. You know, church, I believe also that just like what I've said earlier, Jesus is coming quickly with His rewards mm -hmm. in Him. Okay? And He will reward us according to our work. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that He is also coming quickly to release the freedom over Pastor Raji. Mm -hmm. And how prepared are we to welcome our pastor? Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's why I encourage us always dress nice so that when Pastor comes, <laughs> We will really be ready and pastor, we're prepared. <laughs> Amen. So the best thing that we can do is to really build our relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, just like what we are experiencing right now, what we are seeing in other churches, see, it's easy to really be deceived when you are not connected to the Word. That's why it's very important that right now, God is building its foundation in us mm -hmm. so that we will not listen to men, but we'll listen to the voice of God. Amen. Okay? So that's why it's very important that we will really listen to Him. Amen. 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 Um, okay. So, I will go back to Wow.